Hello, welcome back. My name is Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will explore the concept of modular web design, meaning breaking up our design into reusable components, and we will create different layouts for our website. Let's get started. Now that we got our landing page up and running, I'm going to break up the website into different parts. We have static parts like the navigation on top, like the hero section or the sidebar, and we have dynamic parts like the content itself, which is obviously different on every single page. If we look at our website architecture, we are going to need different layouts for different page designs as well. Some have sidebars and the hero, while others have a wider content area. So let's have a look now how this can be achieved. So first in our code, let's change the name of the index.html to base.html. So if you rename it here, base. This is a normal naming convention in Django. So other templates extend from the base.html file. Next, in the templates folder, let's create another folder called includes and in this includes folder let's create a file called header so header.html then from our base HTML let's close the head here uh, let's find the header section it's here let's copy it and paste it in the header.html save it in our base HTML, we delete the header and we include the code here. So we write curly brackets, then we write the percentage sign. Include and then the path to our header. So in quotes, includes slash header dot HTML. So let's check in the browser if this worked. In case your uh, server is not running and you deactivate it to your virtual environment, let's log back in. So first activate the virtual environment with source vnv slash bin slash activate. Next python manage.py run server. Now we can go to the browser, refresh, and we see here a error message from Django. It says the template does not exist. This is because we forgot to change the name in our function. Let's do that now. So in our views.py, we're changing this to base. Refresh the page. And there we go. Let's do the same now with the hero section. In our base, Let's copy this one, then we create a hero HTML, paste the code in here, get rid of this code here, copy and paste this line and change header to hero. Great. So next is the content area. For the dynamic parts, we create their own folder. So in templates, let's add a folder and we give it the same name as the app itself. So a underscore posts and let's add a file called home because this is the home view. So home.html, this is the page we are actually calling with the function. So in views, we change base HTML to a underscore posts. This is the folder slash home dot HTML save. And this page will grab code from the base dot HTML. That's called extending. So let's write again a template tag. So a template tag is basically these curly brackets with percentage sign. And this time we use the tag extends and the file it extends from, so the base, base.html. So it grabs all the code from base.html. Now we create our content block and for that we also create a template tag. So with the keyword block, 
and give it a name of content and we close it with end block end block like that so this is the basic syntax if you create a page in Django which extends from a base file. So our content now lives within this block here. From the base let's grab the content here and paste it in here. Let's clean it up even further by creating a layout. So in the templates folder I create another folder called layouts. And in this folder I create my first layout and I call it a.html. We will have a couple of more layouts in this folder later on. Here again I extend from the base.html. So curly brackets, percentage sign, extends from base.html. Now I create my block and this time the name of the block is layout. So block layout and block. So now from the home.html I grab all the code I don't like to have in here. So I really only want the article element in here. So I grab all the code from the start to the article here, all this code, cut and paste it in here. So under this code here I add my block content so in curly brackets and percentage sign block content and block. So we have the article we have here also the sidebar I will also break the sidebar out so cut I create a new includes for that. In the includes folder, let's add a sidebar.html here. Paste the sidebar in here. Back to our home, we include the sidebar here. So include and the path to include slash sidebar.html and now I can grab this code as well, cut it out from here and paste it in here and save. So this layout now includes a content wrapper with a mobile site navigation. We will see that in action later and our content lives in a main element here and next to it we have the sidebar. So that's looking great. We have to link it up with the base.html still. So back to the base and we add here the layout block. So let's get rid of this code here. Block layout. And block. So here we include the layout block, which is this one. And in the layout block, we include the content block, which lives on our home.html. Here we can move this one to the very start and save this document. One last thing we have to change here, we're not extending from the base.html anymore, but from the layouts slash a.html. We can save this file now and let's check the website. Refresh. Great, everything still works, but we cleaned up the whole template now. Okay, so let's change back to our original title of the website. Let's go to our hero.html and we change this back to awesome photos and captions. And we also get rid of the title variable in the home view. So get rid of this one here and the dictionary. Now I really want to touch quickly on how we debug in Django. The most useful way is to print out something in our terminal. So if you say print hello 
and refresh the page, we can see it printed out hello here. So in this way you can really see if the code is running as you expect it to. We can also print out objects we don't really understand. For example, this request object, we can just say print and in parentheses request. Now here you see the difference. Hello is in quotes, so it's just a string. It will just print out hello. This is an object, however. It is not a string, so it will print out whatever is in this request object here. So let's save. Let's refresh the page. And we can see here, this is our request object, or basically this is the name of it. We can see here it is a whiskey request and it's using the get method. So very quickly, if you're not familiar with the get method. So there are two methods which are mostly used, the get and the post method. The get method is used to request a web page, whereas the post method is used to send data from the browser to the database. There exist small methods, but these two are the main ones. Now back to the code and it's calling the root URL path, which is linked up to our home view. Now there's much more data within this request. So let's copy this line and add the dot meta property. When we refresh the page now, we can see we get a lot of data back. So in the meta property, we can see a lot of different attributes here. This is all information the browser sends to the backend. Another very useful request property for us is the request.method. So we have seen already the request.method is a get, so it gives me the value of the request.method. I can also write it a bit nicer, so I can write in quotes and then comma request method colon. If I refresh this now, it gives me a nicer way to display this data in the terminal. So what I'm looking here for is the request method and the value is get. So if you write something like if request.method is equal to post so you see here, I'm using two equal signs. So this is, I'm checking if request of method is post. Just one equal sign would assign this value to something, but with two equals, I check if this is a correct statement. So let's say if request of method is a post method, I will print, let's say, bye bye. This should not work because our request method is not a post method, it's a get method. Refresh. And as you see, it did not print out bye bye because this statement is false. So this was just a very quick overview how we can use the print statement to print out something in the backend. It's super useful when we're debugging the code. So let's delete all this code now. And this is our home view for the moment. Okay, let's say you're finished with coding for today now. Let's shut down the server with Ctrl C. And for good measures, you can also deactivate the virtual environment with deactivate. Great, this was it for now. See you at the next one.